I am Gustavo Monteiro, and I am a Patchwork Helper. In this segment of the course, we will be discussing Patchwork Lectures number 50 and number 66. These lectures deal with the creation of fal false beliefs, which occur in early childhood as the child faces adverse circumstances. Children develop immature conclusions when they face adverse circumstances. The child does not understand cause and effect relationships very well and therefore makes immature conclusions which then become wrong beliefs. These wrong conclusions or wrong beliefs are repressed to the unconscious as the child grows yet they keep influencing adult behavior. Although buried into the unconscious, the wrong beliefs keep influencing behavior in the adult life. Wrong beliefs act as blockages to the free flow of emotional energy, thus causing distorted feelings and behaviors. Wrong beliefs may make people behave submissively to others, or else act with harshness, feeling ashamed of their virtues, ashamed of their lovingness, their generosity, caring, compassion, and so on. It may, be, may seem strange that people might be ashamed of their most beautiful virtues, but that can happen. We will discuss a process that may lead to exactly a situation like that. Children have immature, unreasonable expectations about love. The child's unrealistic expec expectation cannot be met, so the child feels rejected and undesirable. Observing the, the parents, the child may notice that one of the parents seems more loving, caring, and outgoing, while the other parent seems aloof, perhaps even tough. The love of the loving parent is taken for granted because the child doesn't need to do anything to get it. It's always there, spontaneously offered, and requires no effort on the part of the child. On the other hand, the love of the aloof parent is sought eagerly by the child. The child has to strive for it or it won't get it. So the child begins to make an association of lovingness with weakness as something not important because it can get with no effort. It's offered spontaneously. On the other hand, aloofness is seen as a sign of strength, as something desirable because the child has to strive for the love and attention of the person who shows aloofness. So the child makes this perception that lovingness is associated with weakness and aloofness with the strength. And then in the immature mind of the child, in its immature logic, it develops a thinking somewhat like this. I am rejected by my aloof and tough parent, yet I seek the love and acceptance of my rejector. I do not reject my rejector. So the conclusion that may be formed is if I am tough and aloof, people will seek my love and acceptance, just as I seek the love and acceptance of my parents, and I will not be rejected, just as I do not reject my aloof parent. From this perception and conclusion, the child develops some shame of displaying lovingness, kindness, acceptance, and proximity and at the same time some pride in showing aloofness, harshness, rejection, and separation. And although these beliefs are formed in childhood, they remain active, influencing adult behavior. The process we have seen leads to an unloving adult who takes pride in being aloof and tough. This, of course, creates separateness. The unconscious beliefs often create conflict with the conscious desires of the adult. 
the existing belief says, if I am unloving, I will be desirable, I will not be rejected. But from the heart comes a different impulse, a natural impulse to love that comes from the higher self. These two feelings get into conflict, and from this conflict many, many troubled aspects arise in life. The process we have seen may lead to the creation of masks, either a power mask, which is an attitude of harshness and toughness, or a serenity mask, which is an attitude of aloofness and superiority. Both of them lead to separation. Both masks attempt to command respect, admiration, acceptance, and love. But they fail, like the use of any mask, which are false attitudes, faked attitudes. They elicit suspicion and defense on the part of the people we talk to. And therefore, they lead to separation. Let's see how a different process may lead to perfectionism and submission. The visual circle starts with the childish desire for absolute and exclusive love. This expectation cannot be met, leading to frustration, hatred and resentment on the part of the child. The child then thinks, I'm bad, shame and guilt on me. From this, it develops a sense of non-deserving, low self-esteem and a need of punishment. If I'm bad, I deserve to be punished. That's what the child thinks. How does the child cope with this? Typically by creating an idealized self-image. The thinking here is, if I am faultless, if I am perfect, I will be loved. The idealized self-image is a compulsive consciousness, a compulsion for perfection. And this leads to an intolerance with faults, be it in yourself or in others. This compulsive consciousness is an imposed, is, a, is an artificial consciousness self-imposed. It's quite different from the consciousness that we all have th that allows us to distinguish right and wrong and guide us in the proper behavior in life. This is a compulsion for perfection which doesn't do much good for us. But perfection is unattainable. So we close the first visual circle right here. This inner circle here perpetuates itself until it is identified, the process is understood, and the circle can then be broken. You have the need of punishment leads to a blocking of happiness and pleasure. A typical way in which adults sabotage their pleasure and happiness is by breaking relationships. Uh, let's think of a, a person that uh, is beginning to have a, an emotional relationship. Let's say a love relationship that seems very promising, very pleasant. Because of that feeling that I'm bad, I need to be punished, the person thinks, oh, I cannot, it doesn't think, because uh, it's in the back of the mind, in, in the unconscious. It's a feeling that it's kind of an underground feeling that says, I don't deserve this promising relationship, so I must break it. I don't deserve it. And before the other party breaks the relationship, which would cause me great pain, for the rejection, I will break the relationship myself. And then the person starts looking for ways, unconsciously looking for ways to break the relationship until it finally happens. 
their relationship is broken, happiness is sabotaged, and this, of course, leads to frustration. This leads to, leads to frustration. And this frustration for not having happiness and pleasure associated with the realization that perfection and perfection is not being attained uh, le leads to a craving for love and acceptance from others. The realization that uh, the perfection cannot be attained and is not being attained gives the person a, a, a feeling of craving for love and acceptance from others. The person expects that others will give enough assurance of one's own competence, lovingness, and goodness. So the person expects that others will say, oh, you're not a bad person at all. You're a nice person, and you're very competent. Everything you do, you do well. You're a very nice person. You're a lovable. But no matter how much of these assertive statements the person receives, they're never enough to fill the void that is inside. So it remains as a need for external approval, approval that's never sufficient. This, of course, closes the visual circle. When the person realizes that it cannot uh, attain perfection and that he's not getting as much acceptance from others as he would expect, then he develops a different thinking and a different strategy. It says, if I please everybody, I will be loved, or perhaps I will be loved. This is the essence of the love mask, a submission mask. And again, it doesn't work like any mask. doesn't yield the result that is expected by the mask bearer. This closes another visual circle, this outer visual circle that is, can be seen here. We have seen that childhood circumstance may lead to immature conclusions, which become rooted in the unconscious, yet still conditioning behavior in the adult life. The pathwork helps us to identify and bring to awareness the immature conclusions that we may be holding, so that we can revise them and replace them with more truthful, mature, and wise conclusions. We do this by an honest self-analysis and self-confrontation, considering the issues we have. Here are some questions for reflection to help in our self-confrontation and self-analysis. As a child, how did you see your parents? Did you see any of them as more loving while the other was more aloof? Did you see any of them as dominant and the other as submissive? Whom do you pick as a desirable model to follow? Did you endorse the dominance of the stronger parent, thus betraying the weaker one? For example, if your father used to criticize your mother, did you join your father in this criticism therefore betraying the mother? Did you feel that you had to please everybody to be loved? Do you have similar feelings with regard, regard to people in your daily adult life? Your relatives, friends, co-workers? Go over the questions suggested in the next discussion forum for this segment and share your conclusions there. Thank you.